Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. So last week we used a new destroyed camp kit to put something together, and I thought for this week, why not use the destroyed trailer home that comes with it and build around that one? So let's jump into it. So yeah, I thought it'd be a natural follow-on from last week to use the trailer, and this thing's pretty cool. It has a few shortcomings that we will get to. Let's have a look at where we are. You see we're down at the bottom of the ash heap here. There's my little camp, just below the Red Rocket Fulling Station there, just across the road from that, which is kind of a bit uh, awkward in some ways because you get a lot of enemies spawning there, but we're just far enough out that it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Let's have a look at some of the uh, big points around here. So I had wanted to build an entire sort of mini trailer park here, but the lie of the land and some of the drawbacks with the trailer. Um, I ended up going down a slightly different road and going for a very, very scrappy camp that sort of builds off this. But as we can see, this is the trailer. It is really beaten up, very similar to what we've got in a lot of other places in the game. But uh, I've dropped it in place where I want it already because the ground is not quite flat, as you can kind of see. And I want that gap in the side there to be where my entrance is. So I kind of want it to be just where the ground's a little bit higher up. So with that in mind, let's get a foundation up to the front here and we'll get ourselves set up to put some stairs on this so that we can get in and out a bit more easily. So the collision box on this can be a tad awkward at times. You can see we can only get so close to the edge of it. A little bit of playing around with it and careful positioning, it goes okay. I managed to line this up reasonably central. But um, the sort of bottom edge of this has a bit of a lip on it that kind of causes issues and where the sheets of metal kind of bend outwards, that sometimes pushes the collision box out a little bit as well. So sort of repairing this thing is not as easy as I was hoping it might be. We'll kind of get this lined up, try and get it level with the centre and up a little bit higher so that the stairs kind of transition nicely into the trailer here. I think that's probably about as close as we're going to get. So we're going to whip the trailer out now. Stick a second foundation on the back there, move this front one over, now we get the stairs in. There we go. So if we start by taking off the one the stairs are attached to, and then the second one, we have a floating staircase. Got a guide video that will show you how I did that in a bit more detail. If you want to check that one out, I'll link it in the top right corner. It's got a whole load of other stuff in that you might be interested in as well. So for now, we're going to try and manoeuvre this up against the staircase. Actually, interestingly enough, the collision wasn't too much of an issue here, which is nice. As with a lot of these big prefabs, or with most things, it's easier to drop them in and then move them once they're placed. And it's kind of true here, but as with all of the big prefabs, this is really kind of finicky. The game doesn't like it too much. It struggles a bit, just because of the sheer size of it, I think. And the amount of uh, sort of stuff that's obscured behind it as well, I guess. But we've got that nice and lined up. It does the job quite nicely. Now we can move on. So, I want somewhere to live, because fixing this trailer up is not going to go particularly well as regards keeping the weather out, so... We want somewhere slightly more separate and a bit better to sort of be a living space and we use that trailer as a crafting room, which is fine as that's where I end up spending most of my time anyway. So I'm going to build a house on the side here. See what this first foundation lined up very carefully with the edge of the trailer here. You need to nudge it a little bit over here because the slope on the ground is kind of uh, putting some of that earth inside the house, which I don't really want. But that's just far enough that the wall will hide that little bit on the edge there, so that's fine. So now I want to kind of drop these foundations down as low as I can get them so that uh, we don't have any excess on the sides showing if we can avoid it. So we'll take that back one out, we'll drop this as low as it goes, which is about there. That's not bad, but I think we can do a little better. Snap this one on here, put another one on the front. Now we take this one out and we can go a tiny little bit lower. Fortunately, this one does want to jump around a bit, so we're going to have to kind of manually replace it using the, the ghost of its original position, which is a bit awkward to do, but it came out all right here, I think. So there we go. Nice and snug. Got that about as low as we can get it. I'll drop that down as well. Nice. So I'm going to move this over to the left, because I'm going to need it again in a minute, and I'm also going to use it in part of the final product eventually anyway. So we'll stuck that one on the back there. That's most of the foundations in. Now this sort of middle row here is going to have to come out. Because I want to put a porch on here. Which is a similar sort of build to the ones I've done before. We'll have to pull these out entirely because I can't swap them straight for porches, unfortunately. So let's find the destroyed one. Because why not? It's the new one. It looks quite good in this particular uh, build. So that's one of the corner ones, actually, I'm going to stick with for this. Do it a bit differently. Flip that round so it's the right way. Yep, snap the next one on there. And I've made one small error, because I want stairs to progress from the porch into the house. So those need to go in first, and then we put the porch in, just for build order reasons, otherwise it won't snap in. Or rather, the stairs won't snap in after. So, 
This little uh, one by two here is going to be the main house. And here I'm using the haunted house set, because my original thought was to make this kind of nice and cosy. But then, once I got to the decoration phase, I realised I actually wanted the whole thing to be way scrappier and basically look like the person living here has just grabbed what they can and dragged it back. So I'm going to change it out for the destroyed set in the decoration phase. The positioning and the pieces I used are exactly the same, even the windows are the same, because it's basically the same set with a different skin on it. But um, yeah, I will be changing that later. But you can see what we're doing here anyway. Half walls on the end, and then half walls with windows on the top, just so we've got some high windows. And haunted house roof on the top. I did actually switch these out for the ones without the windows in the final version, because whilst the windowed versions look fine when you're using the rest of the haunted house set, they look a bit odd with the uh, scrappier set, so I changed those out to the, just the plain ones afterwards. But get these gaps plugged up. There we go, and we have a structure. So that's basically going to be my house done this sort of house build before, and it works quite well. Very, very compact. Just does uh, exactly what you need for a bed and a kitchen and stuff. Just about. So back inside the trailer, I want to seal this up as much as we can. So I've dropped a junk fence in, as you can see there, to plug this gap up with. If we do it on the outside, then the trailer's too high, so there'll be a big gap above it. The ceiling technically is a bit low on the inside, but uh, apparently that doesn't cause any problems, so that's great. <laughs> One thing that is a problem though, in this particular spot, I can't get this junk fence as close to the wall as I'd like, and it's mostly because of those metal frame pieces on the trailer, you can sort of see to the left there. It's kind of blocking me from getting this thing as close as I'd like, so when you look at the sides, you see some fairly big gaps. So I'm not happy with that. So what we can do, drag this over to the other hole, and in this particular position, because of the nature of it, the frame actually sits snug with the edge of the junk fence, once we get it into position, and doesn't leave any big gaps at the side. It kind of closes the gap, in fact, which is quite nice. You'll see in just a sec. We're going to stand outside and nudge this a bit closer, because apparently that's easy to do. I have no idea why, it just wants to cooperate a bit better that way. So there we go, let's hop back in. You see, nice and sealed off. Much better. So, heading back over to the first gap, we're going to use chain link because that will fit in a much smaller gap and it'll kind of clip a little better as well. So sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. In this case, I'm thinking mostly a good thing. There we go. It'll do absolutely nothing to keep the weather out though, so it makes it a bit of an unpleasant place if you wanted to have this as your living space. But uh, otherwise, it works all right. I'm going to make it a crafting space, so it won't be a problem. I did want to see if I could just put a door on here and lock it, but unfortunately, doors do not snap into that doorway. Bit of a pity, but uh, this is what it is. So. Chain link fence it is here. This is not going to clip through the wall, unfortunately. So we'll just have to stack it up against the inside. Do a bit of fine tuning here. This is quite nicely against the edge there. Neat and tidy. Looks pretty good when we're done. So, we've got a few big holes left to deal with. We're going to start with the windows at the end here. I did try this uh, double board first. And as you can see, it's just not wide enough for this particular window, which is a bit unfortunate. It's a bit annoying, really, but... Um, I gave it a go, it will go in place, but you can sort of see the end, neither of the ends kind of meet the edge of the window. So I switched over to the single ones, and we're basically going to board the entire darn wall up. <laughs> Which kind of works, it's scrappy as heck, but that's the vibe we're going for, so. I'm going to drop this down low, because that's the only place I can actually position it. Get that one in there, obviously we've got a big gap at the top. But now the boards we've already put in will support the next load, when we very patiently find the right spot. There we go. Tweak it a tiny little bit. And we'll do the same on this side, this one's really finicky, but it will go in and we end up with something that's just got an absolute stack of boards nailed over it anywhere they could. Yeah, Mum. It's been a bit awkward. There we go, that'll do it. Kind of messy, kind of scrappy, but it works. I'm going to pile a load of front stuff in front of it anyway later, so it won't be a major issue. So I've got two last gaps here that I wanted to look at. Try the outside here, just doesn't look right, stuff's clipping through, it's not good. So we'll pop right round the inside. And we'll board this up from the inside, and that looks much better. Try it again on this side, but uh, we ended up with some unacceptable clipping again, so I decided to just leave this as it is. So, that's the building done. I guess it's time to head off and decorate. Done and dusted. So, I've put a bit of a junk wall around the outside here, and I've deliberately used really low things, because I didn't want it to kind of block the view of the back part of the camp. So, we've got a low kind of barricade around the outside here. Fairly standard design. Just grabbed uh, anything I could, mixed it up, kind of uh, free-handed it in, and left a gap on the corner here for an entrance. 
a couple of tyres and turrets just to prevent any beasties that come to come running around, and they do occasionally, from getting inside. Loads of bits and pieces added on the outside to dress it up. So sort of looking at the profile here is something I wanted to mention. I dropped the flag in at the back there, and after I did, the sort of front left corner where the front of the trailer is just looks kind of oddly low compared to the rest of it. That's why I dropped the satellite dish on there, just to kind of lift it up a bit, and give it a more complete look to it and tidy it up a bit. Not tidy is not quite the right word, but it, it made the thing look better proportioned. You see I've switched over to the scrappy new set for the house there, uh, the destroyed camp kit, and gone with the uh, signs and boards and everything on the outside again. Not quite to the extent as I did last week, but similar principle. So if you want to see that in more detail, do check out last week's build if you haven't already. Yeah, quite happy with how this has come out. Loads of just bits and pieces around and gone with a really scrappy, dragged anything back they could vibe. Which I quite like how it's come out. So we'll head on inside. Got a couple of stash boxes there. Bit of a tight squeeze to get through, but enough room. Electron managed to fit just in the corner there. I had to put that in first and then move the cooking station up to it. This is the new one that came from the current season, the chuck wagon cooking station there. Haven't had the occasion to use that yet. I'm quite happy I did this time. And look, cooking station out front instead. Chuck the wagon in there and a few other bits because we had quite the open space here and I wanted to kind of put some stuff in it and it worked quite well. A little area with some crops there, mostly for decoration more than functionality, but it looks cool. Loads of stuff stuck on the outside of the trailer as well. And we'll head on inside. So I decided to use some solar panels and a little bit of power in here, give it a bit of light. We'll have a look at a nighttime tour in a bit because I'm quite happy with how this came out. And yeah, does the job. Kind of nice atmospheric. Looks very scrappy. Keeps that vibe going on. Obviously got beaten up old chemistry station there and uh, the brewing stations are pretty beaten up. Got those all down this end. So I'm sticking with a the theme here. Use the old Red Rocket uh, cooler there as well, which is basically a fridge. But given that we're right next to the Red Rocket station, I thought that was a good call. Couple of workbenches sticking out from the wall there, just to break up the space a bit. And we'll head around to the end quite gotten into sticking the power armor station in the corner in the last uh, little while. I like that. Stucking it in like that looks, uh, it's a bit different to what I've usually done in the past and I kind of like it. Yeah, compact. So I did use the uh, merge glitch to put some stuff onto the shelf there just to fill up that little gap in the middle. Quite happy with that came out. Weapons bench in the corner. Yeah, a few bits on the floor. I actually really like the floor in here. They've done a really nice job of making it look like it's been abandoned for a very long time. But I do like to have it sort of broken up a bit with rugs and stuff like that as well so quite happy with how this has come out suitable crafting space i think it does the job got all the stuff we need tucked in there's still a bit of room left over you could cram a bit more in here if i needed to but uh, obviously i didn't so quite happy with that some of the dirty beaten up nasty looking rugs is around as well and gone down that road rather than uh, anything cleaner we'll swing around and have a little look at the house do you quite like this? Kind of tacks onto the side quite nicely. Really ramshackle, run down, falling down thing. Grab loads of bits and pieces and just drop them around to dress things up with. Uh, flamingos and all manner of stuff just to make the place look really, really scrappy and like just anything they could find has been dragged back. Thought we might as well use the new canoe benches as well, since they're brand new. Definitely quite nice. They're um, a bit odd in the middle of the ash heap perhaps, but um, I suppose nobody's got any plans to take those to a river now they cut the bench into them. This chain link door is the one that comes with this set as well. I didn't want to use it last time because it just didn't feel quite right, but the improvised feel of this camp it worked quite well with, so I went ahead and used it. And it opens the right way, which is convenient as well. Again, gone for a nice improvised vibe on the inside as well here. Mattress and some stash boxes just to create a bed. Chucked a load of bits and pieces on the floor, boarded up the window, got to keep the breeze out such as we can. We've got a couple of uh, junk fences on the back wall to plug up some of the gaps and you can see the posters and the signs and stuff plugging up some of the others. Maybe a bit breezy and cold, but uh, better than the trailer is anyway. And for some reason I felt like sticking the symptomatic in here. Mostly I think it would have looked a little too out of place out front. But uh, it fits in, I had to destroy the walls to do it, but it worked. Just tucked in the corner there. Yeah, I like this gaff. <laughs> Looks alright. I thought about using the, um, what are they called, the cash register vendors as well, making it a bit smaller, but the, I decided I quite like using the large one once in a while, and it kind of tucks in that gap just about, so it works quite well. Nika girl there, uh, just tucked next to my collectron. 
loads of random bits around. Really happy to finally use that chuck wagon cooking station as well. As like I said, I've had it a few weeks now. It's nice to actually try it out, find a right build where it doesn't look out of place, especially once you put that um, sort of old-fashioned trailer there and build stuff up on that. As the, the two go quite well together, though. So, let's uh, flip over a minute and check this place out in the evening. Here we go. Much darker dingier, got that uh, kind of purple ash heap vibe. So with the lighting here, I did debate whether or not to put some lanterns or some oil lamps out front, sort of near the entrance here, but I actually really decided I like the light being towards the back and it being sort of dimmer at the front. And yeah, I think it works quite well. So you see what you need to see. It's a nice bit of atmosphere and uh, gives it a nice little splash of colour with those cage lights and stuff. The posters on the walls with the lights on those kind of match the lighting really well as well, which is quite cool. And I do like to have uh, Nuka Girl on the walls in my crafting spaces. I feel like uh, the, the pin-up vibe goes quite well in there. So yeah, relatively simple. Plenty of light, see what you're doing. You can uh, brew your chems or whatever late into the evening, should one need to. We'll head on down. So there is one light on the front of this porch that's really what's lighting up the crops there. It works quite nicely, I think. It gives it a bit of a glow, which is quite cool. So that's the cage light. So it took a bit of finagling to get those into the actual position. With the other porches, it's a lot easier. But this one, because it's destroyed and bits stick out and stuff, it's a bit harder. And we'll swing on, have a quick look around the inside. In here, I kept it a bit more light touch. A couple of uh, posters again for a bit of light. Put a... Uh, a lantern next to the bed there, I figure if you want to put the light out before you go to sleep, something like that makes sense. And this corner where the sink is was really dark, so I decided to use the merge glitch again and just stick a lantern on the bottom shelf of the sink there. I have had to kind of tip it a bit to get it in, but it sort of fits. Yeah, it's a nice little bit of light, but not too much. Kind of very ramshackle, scrap heap kind of trashy, grabbed anything they could, dragged it back. But it also looks like they've been here a while, with some of the, the brambles growing back a bit and a few crops in place as well. So, there we go, we're on uh, Destroyed Trailer Camp. I'm quite happy with how this came out, considering uh, it gave me a bit of a headache at first, so quite pleased with that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please do consider dropping subs and likes, I do very, very much appreciate it. Down below the video, you can find social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all those other good buttons, which I very, very much appreciate if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. It massively helps out. And if you get the chance, do join us for live streams as well. I am looking forward to diving back into 76 this evening, and we are continuing with The Witcher 2, which has been good fun as well, so I hope to see you there. But for now, thank you very much for watching, I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.